Hi, my name is Sarah Sugar. I'm the founder of Project Q, which is a unique business dedicated solely to the lives of queer women in New York City. Um, what we do is we combine in-person events with strong online social engagement. Our goal is really to connect queer women both in person as well as online. Project Q currally consists of three unique events. Sorry, three unique, three unique components. The first is a website. Oh, sorry. Okay, sorry. Um, the first is a website that curates events for queer women in New York City. The second is a weekly newsletter that goes out to about 600 individuals at this point. We've been doing this for about two and a half months. And the third is a series of in-person events that combines professional networking events with social mixers. We've hosted about three of these so far, and every time we host one, we really learn a lot about what the community wants and ultimately what the community needs. So when I first started this journey, I knew that I wanted to found a business for queer women in New York City. My market research had told me two things. The first, that queer women had a hard time finding event listings that were specifically targeted for them. There wasn't one outlet or location that was providing a comprehensive listing of all these events. The second was that when women did find these events, they often didn't have anyone to go to them with, and they really didn't want to go alone. Ultimately, queer women in New York City tend to have a little difficulty connecting. Resources for queer women in the city, um, I'm sorry, resources for queer men in the city far outweigh those for queer women. So before I even really knew what shape this business was going to take, I started curating events on, in a Facebook group. The response was overwhelming, and to date we have over 5,000 members, and this is growing every day. So after the popularity of this Facebook group, we decided that we wanted to produce a video to further engage our audience and to really get people excited about what we were doing and to get the word out there. So we decided that we were going to recreate um, the first kiss video. And if you're not familiar with what that is, it was a video that went viral earlier this spring that pretty much paired strangers and filmed them kissing. So we did this, but we did it with queer women. Uh, it was, became very popular, and as of last night when I checked, we had over 110,000 views on our YouTube channel. Um, so from this, we were featured on BuzzFeed, Huffington Post, Fusion, a few other smaller outlets, and then I was interviewed on HuffPo Live about the making of the video. We really gotten, um, the press from this has really propelled us forward, and we started to see a lot of brand recognition, both online and off. Uh, the press from this has also opened up a lot of doors for us in terms of partnerships. We're currently partnering with a queer art magazine to produce a fundraiser for both their company and ours. Uh, an article about this specific event went up online last week and within the first hour it had over 800 likes and 100 shares. We're also in um, discussion with a few other queer um, websites to, th um, to see if there's a potential of creating a queer ad network that would be similar to how Nectar Ads does um, advertising for uh, art websites. So what's next for us? Uh, we're currently in the process of building out our website to include three additional a three additional components. The first is so women can go onto our website, browse events like they already are doing, but then be able to purchase tickets for events and register events directly through our website. The second is for them to be able to connect with women before they go to these events. So they can go into the, um, into the event that they've already registered for and create like ad hoc meetup groups and discussion boards. The third is for women to be able to connect with these women once they're at the events. So once the event goes live, women will be able to message back and forth with each other with each other and then ultimately meet up in person. So think of us as like the queer ladies version of Eventbrite meets How About We meets Grinder. So our revenue models um, are pretty diversified. We have traditional advertising, then we'll also be taking a portion of the ticket sales that are sold on Project Q. Uh, we also have event revenue and then we want to mention that this is a scalable business because we see ourselves as being able to license this unique platform to other websites that cover niche communities. Uh, we also have every intention of going outside of New York City to other large metropolitan areas with vibrant queer communities. So a little bit about the team. It's grown quite a bit over the past couple of months from just myself. I now have an MBA graduate working with me. I'm also a publicist who's doing amazing things. Um, and then also a software engineer. So what we're looking for today is developers, additional talent, and we're really looking for someone who can help us connect us with a potential technical co-founder. This person doesn't need to be a queer woman or even part of the LGBT community. Um, they really just need to have a share of passion for engaging communities and social engagement. So please check us out at projectqnyc.com and uh, we'd love some more Twitter followers. Thank you. Hi, Sarah. Hi. I have a question. I'm really fascinated with your choice of uh, what word you've decided to use to identify your market. And I'm sure you've thought a lot about this. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, but I want to ask you how that goes to your business model. Because um, the more vanilla term, right, uh -huh. would be LGBTQ right. or lesbian. Uh -huh. You've 
you've picked the one that I think from a business perspective could pose some challenges. Could you talk about that? Okay, well, so I could go for the whole LGBT aspect, but that would really encompass men, women, everyone, and we're really targeting gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgender women. So instead of saying all of that and be an alphabet soup, which you can ask Jarvis and Jeremy in the beginning of the semester, that's how I was doing it, it really is, it's a lot easier to say queer women, though I do agree that lots of women still don't like the term, they find it offensive, and some people just don't identify like that. I think being in New York City right now, we're able to get away with that. Maybe not in another city. I would have to address that later on. I actually was thinking about it from the perspective of your potential advertisers, not just your uh, readers oh. and users. And so that's why I was really curious about whether how you had thought that through. I, I think in being a large metropolitan area and being such a progressive city, right now we're able to get away with that. But I think in other cities, we might have to revisit that and how we are going to address it. I would just suggest if you haven't done it, you should really do your market research mm -hmm. on that from, right. from the I have advertiser it, perspective. It pretty much does say that people do have an aversion still to the word queer. But starting in New York City, it just it fits this community the best. Because queer is pretty much just it's the term used everywhere in New York City at the moment. But I, I do agree with you that there is some animosity to, towards the term still. I mean, I think, well, one thing to think about is I mean, queer after the straight guy was like a massive hit I and mean, they had tons of advertising so I, I would yeah but I, I would look into it and see um, right because you know, I, I think of it as a much um, much more brandable term than LGBT uh -huh. like it sounds like it's like you have an attitude you have a in a good way you know you have a perspective right um, I guess as long as I have the microphone you know one question I have is uh, <laughs> about it's dangerous don't give this thing to me uh, the, I love the, 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 the first kiss video you did. That's fantastic. And I wonder, I, wanna, I do want a better sense of the other types of content. Because we heard about like the events and the platform and all this, but I think first and foremost, at least, you, know, you, you want to draw people to the site via content. And, and is that uh, the first kiss video? Are you going to be doing similar things where you're kind of injecting the female uh, queer perspective into big news events? Is there going to be columns and blogs? Like, what's that going to look like? Definitely. Like, besides the platform, I also want to do, I do want to introduce content. Um, and from the video, I've had a, a ton of people reach out to me. Um, one in particular is a startup, a, a queer lady startup that does um, video content. So I am in discussion with them about other particular content. And also just in terms of like actors for this content, that would not be a problem just because I've had so many people reach out to me like, this is awesome when you do the next or the, your second first kiss video. Or I'm like, oh, there's not gonna be a second one, but I wanna be in it. So we definitely do, I wanna have guest bloggers. Um, I want it to be kind of like the BuzzFeed model, like pull people in with cute kittens, but then get them to stay for more substantial content. So I will wanna do things, I've been thinking about something like maybe uh, a tutorial on how to hit on a queer woman at a bar or something like that fun to like because right now I'm just really trying to get a larger audience so pull people in with that kind of stuff and then maybe do some stuff for on the intersection of um, identities with queer women. Sir, it, you, you put up a slide that says what we're looking for you know and I, I think about Dan's point um, two presentations ago about of course it's great to be diversified in your offerings down the road mm -hmm. but I do agree that with his point that at this stage, a laser focus on one or maybe one and a half feature sets um, I think is advisable. And I think you already have advantages there. The mm -hmm. fact that you have great, a great Facebook community that's telling you they love what you're giving them in terms of curated events, as well as like a video that went semi-viral. I think you have great advantages. And as much as you, you think you need a, a technical co-founder at this point, I would, you know, from the point of view of someone who's run a startup, that had to do with content and also helped an angel division write checks for startups. I think you're on the right track doing what you're doing. I think I would just, I would just blow that out. Do as many events as you can, get your email subscriber list into the tens of thousands okay. and you'll, you'll be shocked to see how many people want to come and work with you. Keep doing that, optimize for that okay. and I think you're doing a great job. Awesome. Yeah, I, I agree with that and I also think one thing to think about over here. Um, <laughs> hi. Uh, Front row. Uh, no, but I, I wanted to ask, uh, I think with the events in particular, it comes off a little bit like a listing service. I think you need some clarity as to what okay. these events are because, okay. you know, there's no dearth of networking events and people know where the bars are they want to go. So it's like you, what's the added value you're bringing with these events if okay. in fact they're your events? Something to clarify. Okay. Sarah, I'm... Okay. Okay, um, that, that would be me at the moment. Okay, so. okay. That is something that, that will characterize your brand. And then, um, 
Okay. Oh, second kisses, not a second video. Okay, I get that. Okay. Okay. That might be harder to, to pull people together Last for, but okay. Sarah, Sarah, I'm really impressed with what you've accomplished so far. It's amazing to go from, I talked to you when it was at zero, and now you have you know, all these people involved, which is great. Speaking of the slides, though, one thing that maybe I missed it, but you did say where your revenues were coming from, but there weren't any projections. Okay. There were no hard figures or, or you know, estimates in there at all. And that left me wondering whether you decided not to do it because they were weak or you know, what, what the story is. No, I'm definitely doing it. Definitely doing okay, it. Well, it, my point is that I think it should be in the okay, presentation. Okay, no, I'll definitely include that. That's a good point. 